everyone welcome to gem chem now today's video is on understanding the symmetry in inorganic molecules part 2 video and here we are going to find out the genuine operations for s5 symmetry element and we are also going to find out the symmetry elements and as well as operations of pcl5 if7 and our p286 now before starting already one video is uploaded in channel you can watch it i'll make in the link in the description box as well as the i button present about this video and if you are new to gem chem do not forget to subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates now let us start so first we are going to deal with the genuine operations of s5 and as you know since s5 is our uh, odd number so there might be only four operations that is n minus 1 so we get four operations so let us find out the operations first so if we try out for s5 1 so in that case you have c51 into sigma so this is a new operation and we can say that this is our genuine operation now if we go for s52 then it has c52 into sigma 2 and as you know sigma 2 is equivalent to e identity operation so we have c52 this is not a new operation so we are not going to consider it as genuine now we shift for s5 3 operation so in that case you have c5 3 times and sigma cube which is equivalent to 1 sigma because sigma square is equal to an identity element so this is a new operation so we can say that s5 3 is also a genuine operation if we go for s5 4 then in that case we have c5 4 into sigma 4 and sigma 4 is equivalent to e so we have here c5 4 and this is not a new operation now we shift for s5 5 in that case you have c5 5 into sigma 5 now sigma 5 is equivalent to 1 sigma and c5 5 is equal to our identity element so we have the operation as sigma so this is also not a genuine operation now we are going to see c5 6 in that case you have c5 6 into sigma 6 now sigma is even number of times it is equal to e and c5 6 is equivalent to c5 1 so this is also is not a genuine operation as we are getting c5 axis from it now we shift for s5 7 so in this case we have c5 7 into sigma 7 so sigma 7 times means 1 sigma so here we are getting a new operation which is different from the previous one and we can write it as c5 2 into sigma so s5 7 is a genuine operation now we go for s5 8 go for s5 8 you are going to get c5 8 into sigma 8 now what do you mean by sigma 8 it is also identity operation and c5 8 means c5 3 times so here also we are getting no new operation now if we shift for s5 9 then you can get here c5 9 into sigma 9 times means 1 sigma so from here you are getting c5 you can write this as see here s5 9 can be written as from here c5 4 into sigma so this is also a genuine operation and we see here we have already obtained four operations which were required one is s5 1 another is s5 3 another is s5 7 and the last one is s5 9 if you try it out for s5 10 then you will get a 
identity operation that is C510 which is equivalent to C55 which is E as well as sigma 10 is equals to E. So, S510 is also not a genuine operation. So, for S5 we got 4 genuine operations. Now, we are going to see the symmetry elements or symmetry operations present for PCL5 molecule. In case of PCL5, if you consider, you can see it will have a identity element. Similarly, it will have a C2 and C3. C3 will pass from the middle. So, this will be your C3. C2s will be present from this this is your C2 that is there will be three perpendicular C2s one passing from this chlorine one passing from this chlorine another one for this chlorine you are going to have sigma V that is the plane passing through the each chlorine atom present in this plane and dividing this chlorine and this chlorine so there will be three sigma V's and you will also have a sigma H which is this one sigma H and finally you are having for this one S3 axis. So, let us write down the operations properly. So, first one which we have for this one is we are having E operation E symmetry element which have only one operation. We have 3 C2s and C3. So, for 3 C2s we have 3 operations and C3 itself consists of C3 1 and C3 2. So, we have 2 operations. Now, if we go for sigma V there is 3 sigma V's and there is 3 operations and for sigma H there will be 1 operation and for S3 we know S3 is an odd one. So, there will be N minus 1 operation and it will be S3 1 and S3 5 as we have done in previous video. So, this will come to be as 2. So, total number of operations which we can see from here is 12 in number and the point group for this one is D3H. Why D? Because D comes from the presence of perpendicular C2s and the main principal axis is C3. So, we have 3 and we have sigma H. So, it is D3H and the total operations present in this is 12. Now, we are going to see the symmetry elements and operations for IF7. So, in this case, if you see the structure, you can see that there is a pentagon present here. So, the axis which will be the principal axis is obviously having 5 times rotation. So, here you are going to have a C5 axis passing from the middle. So, here you have principal axis as C5. Similarly, you will have C2s perpendicular to C5 and the number of C2s will be each for each of the fluorine present in this plane. So, there will be 5 perpendicular C2s. Similar to the previous molecules, you are going to have sigma BV passing through each of these fluorine present in the plane and it will be accommodating these fluorines in the same plane. You are going to also have a sigma H passing through this plane which is this one sigma H and since you have perpendicular C2 as well as C5 so here the alternating axis is S5 which is present and we have already seen in this video that S5 will have four operations in it. So, let us write down properly what are the different operations present for this case. First, we have our E which is equals to 1. Then we have C5 and perpendicular C2s and the perpendicular C2s are 5 in number. So, for C5 we have 4 operations plus 5 for the 5 C2s. We have 5 sigma V. So, for that we have 5 operations we have sigma H for that we have one operation and for S5 if you consider for S5 you are going to have four operations. So, S5 will be four operations as you have seen S5 1, S5 3, S5 7 and S5 9. 
Now we are going to see what are the total number of operations in this case. The total number of operations in this case is 20. And if we are asked to write down the point group, then it is easy. We have perpendicular C2s along with the principal axis. So we will we'll write it as D. And we have the principal axis as C5. We will write it as 5. And we also have sigma H. So we will write D5H. So this is our point group for IF7. Now we will shift for one of the most important molecule and this is very important with regards to your exam also. It is B2H6. So if you consider about the B2H6, if we see here, this is somewhat a three-dimensional structure. So one C2 can pass through this plane. So this is 1C2. If you alternate it by 120 degree, then it will be giving similar structure. 1C2 will pass through this. This is 1C2. Another C2 will come out from this towards you. And it is present at the back. So this is also another C2. So you are having three C2s. You will see also there is sigma V present. So sigma Vs are present from this plane that is passing from here also another sigma v is passing from this that is this one so here we have sigma v and here also we have sigma v one sigma h will be present throughout the plane this is our sigma h and we have a inversion center now if you consider here that you have a uh, point in between so once you move from this side to the hydrogen which is present here again if you move in the opposite direction which is present here that is if i say here this is the main point if you travel in the opposite directions like this as well as like this you are going to get the same atoms in the both side similarly if you come from here to this side as well as from here to this side you are getting same atoms so you have a I also that is inversion center. So let us write down the symmetry elements properly one by one. First we have obviously it is very important that is E one operation. Second we have three C2s. This is three in operation. Similarly we have two sigma V. So here we have two operations. We have sigma H which has one operation and in the next one we have I which is equivalent to S2 and we can write it as 1. So here we can see that the molecule consists of one C2 and the other two C2s are perpendicular to each other. So if you are having two C2s perpendicular to each other in any molecule, always remember that there will be another C2 always. So we can write here number of total number of operations as 8 and our point group will be D2H. This is our point group. So what we conclude is that if a molecule has two perpendicular C2s then there will be always another C2 perpendicular to them. And if you have a molecule consisting of Cn and sigma H then it will have Sn but reverse is not true that is if Sn is present it may not have Cn and sigma H. So for a S axis to be present there should be a Cn as well as a sigma H. So here ends the topic of discussion for today in the next day we are going to deal with some more more this was helpful thank you for watching do not forget to like share subscribe and comment and if you are interested you can join also the membership of Gemchem.